Welcome to the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast, powered by Jetro. Each week, we bring extremely valuable accounting and tax tips specific to small business owners. You will be on your way to growing your business and putting more money in your pockets. Here's your host. Hello, and welcome back to another episode. Today's topic is what do I need to know about 1099s? And this is specific for business owners. Now, more than likely, if you've been a business owner, you have heard of 1099 or you've heard of the the numbers 1099 and you have either received one of them or you've been told that you need to send them out. And so really what I want to do is take the time in this podcast episode to clear any confusion and ensure that you have everything you need to know about 1099s before you need to start sending them out. And that is <clears throat> January <clears throat> when you need to start preparing them and sending them out. So we want to get a jump start on this so that you know ahead of the deadline when these need to be uh, sent out where they might be relevant. So for those of you that maybe just listened to the first part of episodes, I want to talk about what is the one thing you need to make sure you know about 1099. So if you walk away from anything, here's what I want you to know. If you pay a contractor over $600 in a year, you need to send them a 1099 NEC. If you walk away with anything from this episode again, just know that if you pay a contractor, you need to request a W-9 from them so that you can eventually send that 1099 NEC at year end. Also, if you are a contractor that has received a 1099 NEC, you must report that as income, of course, on your tax return. The IRS is going to get a copy of that same exact form and will use that to match up with your income what you're reporting on your return in that 1099 to make sure that everything is included. Okay, now let's dig a little deeper, and I just want to ensure that I got the important piece announced up front to those that might start to fade away. So let's let's dig deeper on that concept. When do you need to file a 1099 NEC? Again, if you paid a contractor $600 or more in total for a year, you would need to send them a 1099 NEC. This could include an individual, a company, a vendor, whatever it might be. And one thing to make make sure you understand is that this is an accumulative total. So if you send three payments of $250 for a total of $750 throughout the year, a 1099 NEC would be required. So this is not one specific payment. This is the total payments made to a specific individual, company, vendor, etc. throughout the year. If the total is $600, a 1099 NEC would need to be sent to them. Now, there are some exceptions. There are some areas or times when a 1099 NEC is not required to be filed, and that is for payments to a C or S corporation. And so when we're looking to file a 1099, you're going to be requesting from anybody that you pay, and typically we recommend to request this before you actually pay them, but you're going to be requesting a W-9. And on that W-9, they're going to check if this company is taxed as a C corporation or or an S corporation. And if that is checked, they're an, S, they're an S corporation or a C corporation, a 1099 does not need to be sent to them. And one thing to note on that, that exception does not apply for payments to attorneys for legal services. So for everybody but attorneys, that C or S corporations, you do not need to send a 1099 to. If it's an attorney, still need to send it even if it is a C or S corporation. Other reasons why you would not need to send a 1099. If you have employees, employees are going to be W-2 employees. So you're going to be withholding taxes from them, paying Social Security, Medicare on their behalf, and everything like that. So employees would not receive a 1099. Instead, they're going to receive a W-2 at year end from you. You do not need to send a 1099 for payments for merchandise, telephone costs, freight costs, or storage costs. And finally, payments that are made via a credit card or PayPal you would not need to send a 1099 for. Instead, that that PayPal comp that PayPal or that credit card company is going to be the one that's going to report that income to the eventual vendor via a form 1099k. So if you pay via credit card or pay via PayPal, you do not need to send a 1099 to that specific vendor because they're going to get a 1099 instead from that merchant processor. The person or company that is paying the contractor is the one that sends and files the 1099 NEC. All right, cool. So let's go through what the typical 1099 process looks like. Step one, we kind of talked about this before. First, you're going to collect a W-9 from all contractors that you pay, even if it's under $600. 
as we know, you know, as we talked about previously, if it's under 600, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have a, another payment that's going to bring it above that. And one thing that we've known in our history here is that if we try to collect a W-9 after the fact, it's really hard to do it. So we always say, as soon as you pay someone, even if it's $50, Ask for a W-9 just in case you jump over that $600 threshold. You don't have to be monitoring that. You don't have to go back after the fact and do that. So step one is collect a W-9 from all contractors. Step two is if a 1099 is required, doesn't meet any exceptions or exemptions from above, then you as the business owner would prepare the 1099 NEC. All information needed to prepare that 1099 would be found in the W-9 outside of obviously the amount that you paid. That would be something that you have in your internal system. So step two, if a 1099 NEC is required, you as the business would prepare it and send it to them. Step three is send a copy of the 1099 NEC form to the contractor. So the contractor has a copy of it. And then step four is file that 1099 NEC with the IRS. Uh, For us internally, when we're processing 1099s for us internally or our clients, we use a software called Track 1099 to handle the preparation and filing of those 1099s. So if you're trying to use something, the software out there that maybe will help this filing process, check that out. And again, if you are a contractor that has received a 1099 NEC, this is income that must be reported on your tax return, whether that's a personal return, a Schedule C, or a business return. Next question we see is when does the 1099 NEC need to be filed by? They must be filed with the IRS and sent to the recipient by January 31st of the following year. So if we're talking about the year of 2021, these would be due on January 31st of 2022. Now, if January 31st falls on the weekend or something like that, it would be the next business day. Many people say, I forgot to send a 1099 or what if I'm just not going to send it? What are the penalties? Uh, first off, if, I would not recommend that, but if you forgot to, if you're struggling to get a W-9, the, the penalties are really going to depend on how late you are. So if you file within 30 days past the deadline, it's going to be $50 per 1099 filed within 30 days. More than 30 days, but before August 1st, is going to be $110 per 1099. If you file after August 1st or not at all, it's going to be $270 per 1099. And if you intentionally disregard or you intentionally do not send a 1099, that's going to be $550. So that's where the penalties are. Just depends on how late you are. Ranges from anywhere from $50 per 1099 up to $550 per 1099. Now, if you've been around and and kind of done your own tax returns or, or, or known or looked at your tax return process, you'll know that there are other types of 1099 forms out there. So simply put, a 1099 is an informational filing form used to report non-salary income to the IRS. And that's a key thing. Salary income is going to be on a W-2. A 1099 is to report non-salary income to the IRS. And there's actually over 15 different types of 1099 forms that are used for various different purposes. And so that's why we kept you kept hearing me say 1099 NEC. That's not employee compensation. So 1099 NEC is one type that we see most common with businesses. But some others are a 1099 miscellaneous, MISC. And this is used for other items like rent, royalties, prizes or rewards, things like that. There's a 1099 INT, and this is where financial institutions are required to file this form if they pay more than $10 in interest during the year. There's a 1099K, and this is issued by credit card companies, merchant processors, if payments for the year go over a certain dollar amount. This is what we talked about with the credit card and PayPal. They're going to send a 1099K. There's a 1099DIV. DIV, and this form reports distributions such as dividends, capital gains, distributions, things like that. There's a 1099B. This one's this set. You you likely see one of these if you sell stock, and it's going to show the date of the sale, cost basis, all those details. There's a 1099G, and this is used to report unemployment compensation or refunds that you might have received from the state. These are normally state related. There's a 1099R, and this is going to be if you have any distributions from a retirement plan, that's going to be on the 1099. So there's a lot of different 1099s that you're going to see, uh, especially when you're doing your personal taxes. But when we look at businesses, most of the time we're looking at a 1099 NEC. That's going to be what we use to report income to contractors, vendors, things like that. And then we're also going to have a 1099 MIS. And that's typically for a business, you're going to be reporting rent payments on that. So let's go through a summary of this. Uh, Starting in 2020, so last year, independent contractors or non-employee compensation is filed on a 1099 NEC. Traditionally, 
that was filed on a 1099 MISC, M-I-S-C. But starting in 2020, that's 1099 NEC. As always, we always recommend grabbing a W-9 from all independent contractors you pay. You never know when you may need to when you may need to send them a 1099. You never know when you're, when you're going to meet meet that $600 threshold, and it is extremely hard from our experience to grab a W-9 after the fact. Total payments throughout the year totaling $600 or more trigger the 1099 NEC filing requirement, unless some type of exception is met. And remember, when we looked at the exceptions, it's payments to a C or S corporation, employees, those are not going to be on a 1099, that's going to be on a W-2. Um, contractors would be a 1099, but so the exceptions are payments to C or S corporations, no 1099 NEC required. Payments to employees, no 1099 NEC, you're going to use a W-2. Payments for merchandise, telephone costs, freight, or storage, no 1099 NEC, and as well as payments made via credit card or PayPal, no need to file a 1099 NEC. And then finally, um, we're going to use the 1099 NEC for contractors and vendors and things like that, but we're still going to use that 1099 miscellaneous, MISC, for any rent payments that we make. Now, there is some links in our show notes or in the, in the blog, which will be in our show notes. There's a link to the Form 1099, uh, both the miscellaneous and the NEC. There's a link to IRS Form W-9, um, instructions for all those forms, as well as we have a link to track 1099 if you're looking for that software to help make this process easier for you. So this is, again, just a topic we wanted to bring up before year end, because before you know it, we're going to be having to file these 1099s. We want to make sure that you are on top of it. So if you haven't grabbed W-9s yet, now is the time you want to do it because you don't want to be scrambling near the deadline. Now, one thing I also want to talk about before we let go here is, as always, we kind of talk about our tax minimization program. This is a great place if you want to take it deeper on this tax planning, really dive into the strategies, implementation guides. If you want access to our team to kind of be that accountant in your back pocket on this journey, uh, the tax minimization program is a great option for that. We also have bookkeeping training and things like that. Um, You can find out more about that tax minimization program at taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash tax. And also a reminder, we're going to be hosting our Small Business Tax Savings Summit next June 14th and 15th. This is going to be an incredible two-day event, um, 12-hour worth of content where you're going to learn so many tax saving strategies and you're going to just walk away from this rejuvenated. Now, we do have a promo code specific to podcast listeners, which is $100 off. So if you go to taxsavingspodcast.com forward slash summit, you'll be able to sign up there and the coupon code is podcast taxes podcast taxes again the small business tax savings summit go to small business or go to tax savings podcast.com forward slash summit a coupon code for a hundred dollars off specific to podcast listeners is going to be podcast taxes all capital letters that's all i have for today i want to thank you guys for jumping in again we're going to finish some year-end stuff here and don't forget to grab that w9 from your contractors thank you for listening to another episode and i will see you guys next week This has been another episode of the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast from the team at Jetro. If you enjoy our weekly episodes, please leave a review on whatever platform you listen to us on and share with other business owners. If you have any questions or future topics you want to hear, email them to tax at jetrotax.com. Thanks for listening and have a great day.